welcome to today's workout. I've got an incredible legs and arm workout for you. We've got five supersets, 10 exercises, five exercises for your legs, and three exercises for triceps, two exercises for biceps. Super excited. We're gonna be working in supersets, putting two exercises back to back together um, with no rest in between, and then you're gonna take a short rest after the superset. Take a little bit longer rest if you need it, a little bit shorter rest if you don't, and if you want a harder workout today, you're going to perform three supersets. I'll demonstrate each exercise before we get into it, but for now, let's get started with a little bit of a warm up. Separate your feet, and let's take a big inhale up. Exhale it out two more. I want you to really stretch up long towards the sky, all the way up. Exhale it out one more. And on this one, I want you to stay up here at the top, breathe normally, and I want you to actively reach up towards your ceiling. Lengthen the space from your rib cage to your hip bone, really aggressively lifting up as long and as far as you possibly can. And now relax it out, and I want you to just come into some spinal twists, just a natural spinal twist, anchoring down on your pelvis, and we're gonna do that reaching exercise again. This is a great exercise to activate your transverse abdominus, which is the big, powerful abdominal muscle that draws your belly inward. So you know when you want to really suck your stomach inward? That's your transverse abdominus. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do another exercise that really helps to fire it up so that you're prepared for the workout. One more here. And to relax, arms up over your head and Go. I want you to lift up as high as you possibly can. Lift, lift, lift. Really lengthen every little centimeter from your head to your tailbone. Actively reaching, lifting, and holding. You'll feel the muscles of your abdomen grab and fire up. And relax, coming into that spinal twist. So we're going to do this one more time. So you'll feel your transverse abdominus activate and you'll know it's happening because you'll feel the muscles in your back activate as well. So if you feel your back muscles grab during that exercise, that's proof that you're doing it right and that you're getting that transverse abdominus fired up. One more here and relax and let's do that reaching exercise again. Arms up over your head and go. Reach, 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 reach as high as you possibly can. Aggressively, you're gonna feel your belly warm up and you're gonna feel the muscles of your lower back just kind of grab and fire. That means you're doing it right. Lift, 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 and relax. Take your feet separated, take a look down and make sure that your toes are truly parallel to each other. Super, super important, keep your feet parallel. I want you to come into a little bit of a side sit here, really pressing your hips back. So before we go deeper, sit into your heels, pressing your hips way back, no pressure on your toes whatsoever. Hips back, feet stay truly parallel, and if this is good, let's take it a bit deeper, coming all the way down to sweep across the floor. Sit deeply into your bent leg. This exercise is preparing you for the rest of the workout, and it's doing two things. It's activating glutes, hamstring, and quads on the leg that you're pushing off of, and it's giving an active and dynamic stretch to the inner thigh of the leg when it's straight, right there. So we get this really great combo of dynamic activation, activating the glutes, preparing the joints, and giving a little bit of that active and dynamic stretch on the inner thighs so that when we do our goblet squat, your legs will already be ready. Couple more here, sitting deeply. And let's do one more. Feet together. I want you to reach up over your head and then come back into a modified lunge. Alternating sides, big reach, lunge. Big reach, lunge. Let the back knee bend. Let the ankle bend. Once this feels good and you feel steady, we're gonna make it bigger. Big reach all the way to the ground. 
big reach all the way to the ground. Let your back knee fully release all the way down with a gentle tap on the floor. Big lift, full drop. Big lift, really stepping back. Drive into your front heel because that is what really activates the glutes on that front leg, keeping your toes relaxed. You can move faster or slower, whatever works for you throughout the workout. Big reach. And let's do one more. Last one. And relax. Feet together. Find a spot on the floor in front of you that you can focus your gaze on. Find your spot, focus your gaze, bring your weight onto one leg, soften that knee. And I want you to just hold for a couple of seconds, finding your balance, settling in finding your balance. This might be hard for you. This might be easy for you. Once you settle in, I want you to now trace the floor. Look around the floor with your eyes and your head. It's going to throw your balance off, okay? That's the name of the game here. I want you looking around to throw your balance off so that this leg and your body in general has to counterbalance. Now let's make it bigger. I want you to look up, look down, and as Dr. Seuss says, look all around. Look everywhere and really let your balance get thrown off. Try to throw your balance off and you're going to feel all of the muscles of that foot, lower leg, knee, all the way up into your hips and core start to activate. Looking everywhere and relax. By the end of the set, you're probably gonna feel some warmth and some burning in this leg or this hip. That's the name of the game. So, same thing. Weight on the other leg. Find a balanced gaze where you can just settle in to find your initial balance. You'll notice that you find your balance in a couple of seconds. So when you first come to the leg, you might be a little wobbly, then you settle in. Once you've settled in, make sure this knee is bent, and I want you to start to look around your floor, throwing your balance off. You'll notice one leg is gonna be better at this than the other. Totally normal. Whichever leg is more challenging, I just want you to give it a little bit more energetic love. Try harder when you're on that leg that it's a little more wobbly. This is my wobbly leg. Back and forth, and as soon as you get good at that, I want you to look up, look down, look all around. Listen, if this is easy for you, I want you to look all the way behind you, moving your head and your eyes. Actually let your eyeballs move as your head moves. Looking all around, I want you to challenge yourself. It's an incredible prep for glute medius. It's an incredible prep for your knees, and it's just so good for us to be practicing balance in general. Super, super important. And relax. One more preparatory exercise for you. I want you to reach up super tall, and then I want you to come down into a runner's lunge, scoop forward, turn towards the leg that is in front, back hand to the back heel, Pause for a moment for that incredible, amazing stretch. And then we're just gonna switch sides. Inhale up, scoop down, step forward, step back, scoop up, turn towards the leg in front to make sure you keep that back toe tucked under. Back hand to that heel, front hand to the front of your leg, and just holding for that incredible stretch. And let's repeat, reach up, Step forward, we're gonna do a couple on each side. We'll do a total of three on each side. Pausing here for about two to five seconds just to really enjoy that rotation and that stretch. If it's uncomfortable on your bottom knee, double up your mat, put a, a towel or a pillow down. Inhale up, same thing, other side. We're gonna do three in total on each side. Here's number two. Activate your glute. So of that leg that's on the ground, that knee that's on the ground, I want you to squeeze your glute on that side to get that hip opening. Inhale up, one more each side. Reach, 
Abdomen drawn in, full rotation. <sighs> so good to open the chest. So good for spinal rotation. So good for that back foot. So good for your front hip. This is just one of my absolute favorite exercises. I call it the world's greatest stretch. I hope you agree. And last one on the other side. Big scoop, full rotation, hand back onto that heel. And if you find this challenging, of course, just modify anything as you need to, and that applies to the rest of the workout. Whenever you've got to modify something, just modify, take a break, take it easy, make it work for you. Step together, inhale up, exhale it out, and just keep your feet moving. We are gonna jump into the workout, super excited. Okay, first superset. You are going to need some heavy dumbbells for this first superset. Let me demonstrate the two exercises and then you can get out ahead of me. Now remember, your job is to use a weight load here where the last two repetitions are hard. I want you aiming for 12 repetitions on every exercise. You're in charge of counting your repetitions. If you're limited by your home equipment, please do 15 or 20 repetitions. But I want you to be using heavy enough dumbbells and aiming for 12. First two exercises, you are going to need heavier dumbbells. Toes are turned open. Dumbbells are in front of you together. This is a sumo deadlift. You're going to reach your hips back, slide your dumbbells down towards the floor, stand up, squeeze your glutes. Hips back, slide those dumbbells down towards the floor, squeeze your glutes at the top. Second exercise is a double dumbbell single leg deadlift. Uh, find your balance on one leg, holding two dumbbells. You're gonna come forward, bringing your dumbbells together in front of you, up, squeeze the glute, 12 on this leg, 12 on the other leg. Let's get started. So toes are turned open. We're not in a full plie, but we're wider than a goblet squat. Ends of the dumbbells together, chest is up, hips back, sit down, Stand, squeeze your glutes, there's one. Please count your repetitions. I am not to be trusted here because I would prefer to talk you through the exercise. So this is technically a deadlift. So I want your hips moving back in space first before you sit down, trying to keep your chest up as much as possible, okay? So you don't have to bring the dumbbells fully to the, to the ground unless that works for your fitness level and also your mobility. So hips back, dropping down, squeeze the glutes, two more. Make sure you finish that move at the top, super, super important. One more, last one, and let's come into that single leg deadlift, no rest in between. Find your balance on one leg, two dumbbells. Coming forward until the dumbbells tap in front, just in front of your shin. The goal here is not to bring the dumbbells all the way down to the ground. The goal is to bring your torso almost to parallel to the ground so that your dumbbells end somewhere between your ankle and your knee. Mid shin, mid to lower shin is really ideal for this exercise. Squeeze your glute at the top, right there. That leg that you're standing on, really squeeze that glute hard. And remember, this is a strength workout. So I do want you using dumbbells that are challenging. One more, and then we're gonna do the other side. Same thing, other side. Start with your knees bent first. Find your balance even before you move. Squeeze your glute at the top. And again, just like I said on that balancing exercise, you're gonna have one leg that's better at this than the other leg. And so on that leg that's just a little bit less agile, it takes a few repetitions to warm up. But you'll see as soon as you get into the set, on that leg that's challenging for you, it settles in. But it's really normal for each one of us to have one leg that's better than the other leg. 
totally normal. Like I said at the beginning, I want you to put your focus into giving that leg a bit more love, a bit more mental energy, and just try a little harder on that leg that's less stable. One more here, and we're gonna take a short break, or if you want to do three supersets today, you're not gonna take a break. You're gonna jump right into repeating those two exercises. Now listen, my preference is that this exercise is, all the exercises are challenging enough for you that you need to take that little bit of rest in between the supersets. So you should be a little bit breathless, but your muscles should want a little bit of a recovery before you go back to the next superset. If you can, get yourself some heavier dumbbells because that is really what we're going for here. This is not a cardio workout. This is a legs and arms strength workout. And I want you to really invest in yourself by investing in your home equipment. If you need heavier dumbbells, get them for next week's workout. Let's go into set number two. How did it feel? <clears throat> if set number one, was comfortable, get your heavier dumbbells. Let's go in for that sumo deadlift. Ideally, you'll be using eight, 10, maybe even 15, 20, 25 pound dumbbells here, depending on your strength training experience and your fitness level. Toes are turned open, dumbbells end to end, hips back, slide those dumbbells down, squeeze your glutes. You always wanna make sure that you're finishing your exercise at the top by really activating and squeezing the glutes. Super important. That's something that a lot of people miss is that they just kind of stand up and sit right back down without fully finishing. And finishing means you're getting your hips fully underneath your spine so that you've got a straight line from your ankles to your hips, to your shoulders, to your temples squeezing the glutes so that we're reinforcing really good posture at the top, but to also fully and properly activate your glutes there. Let's do one more. Going into that single leg deadlift, two dumbbells, five pounds, eight pounds, 10 pounds. Some of you are probably even using 15 pounds here. Feet together, knees soft. Find your balance, toe is turned to open a tiny little bit, 12 repetitions. Please count your own. And just as I was saying, at the top here, finish the move by fully getting your hip underneath your spine, squeezing the glute. The weaker your glutes, the more you're gonna really legitimately need to come in and activate them. Right there. Squeeze like crazy. Now, admittedly, I tend to overcorrect here. I tend to exaggerate this. So for all those critics who might be watching, yes, I exaggerate this a little bit and there's several reasons for it. Uh, the biggest reason is I find is most people really are watching and learning and that overcorrection um, is almost like an exclamation point. It's a way to remind you to really make sure you're hitting that point on the exercise. If I exaggerate it, you'll pick it up. Same thing on the other leg. Additionally, the structure of my hips and my glutes is such that my glute training is better when I really make sure I get that conscientious glute squeeze activation there. Is it not heaven? Try it with me if you haven't already. It's so good. It literally fixes so many hip issues. If you sit a lot during the day, this is one of the best cues you can master right there. Heavy into your heel, driving from the bottom to the top by pressing into your heel. Nothing in that front toe. Keep your front toe relaxed as much as possible, you're counting your 12 reps, then you've got a short break before you go on to your third superset or join me for the next two exercises. One more, and yes, I realize I might do too many at times. I might miscount. That's the way it goes. 
welcome to my workout. I'm an imperfect human. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, next superset. We've got split squat, overhead hold with a goblet squat. So again, you want one dumbbell that's kind of heavy in a perfect world, eight to 10 pounds or more for this next exercise. That being said, if you're new to strength training, if you've got toe issues, if these exercises are hard for you, it's always okay to do body weight. Always okay to do body weight. First exercise, let me show you. Feet together, stepping back to set up your split squat. You're on the ball of the back foot. Hand is up over the head. We're dropping down and stand. 12 repetitions on each leg. Next exercise, goblet squat. Toes are turned open about the same. Is that sumo deadlift? Maybe a little less. Chest is up and squeeze those glutes. Ready? Let's go. Grab your heavy dumbbell up over your head. Feet together, knees soft. Step back, find your split squat position. And let's go, 12 reps now. If you cannot do this with a dumbbell, or if this is very challenging, whoo, on your back toes or your balance, hello. You could put that dumbbell down and place your hands onto your front leg to stabilize you. You can also use a chair or a wall next to you to help stabilize if you need it. Listen, listen, this exercise is hard. Split squats and Bulgarian split squats are arguably two of the most complex challenging exercises. So if you find this hard, welcome to the club, my friend. One more, it's supposed to be a little hard. Same thing on the other side. Take a moment to collect yourself if you need to. <laughs> Feet together. Dumbbell up over your head, knees soft, okay? It really helps on this exercise to take a moment to set it up, like get in a great position here, which feels really good, so that you load it before we begin. Dropping down, and as I said, listen, no shame in the modification game. If you gotta modify, no shame. But I also wanna be an example of where I want you to go. And in a perfect world, down the road, you should be at eight to 10 pounds here or more. And that might not happen next week. That might happen in a few months. I just want you to set your sights towards where you're headed, especially if this exercise is hard for you today. Two more here. And as I said before, you're gonna notice one side is easier than the other. Again, totally normal. Goblet squat, toes open, dumbbell stays in contact with your upper chest. Keep your chest lifted, body weight on those heels. Sit down until your elbows are just inside your knees. And you want to end with your tailbone below your knees. Again, that's the goal eventually. If you're not there today, that's okay. But the goal is that you hit your bottom position here and your booty is below your knees. A little or a lot, but the goal is not to get your bum all the way down on the ground, okay? We just want your pelvis to be below your knees to some degree. One more, short break. I hope you need the short break. If you don't, go find yourself some heavier dumbbells or do more repetitions. So if you're limited, so right now, um, the heaviest dumbbell I have is a 10 pound kettlebell, but I only have one. So my heaviest dumbbells are eight pound dumbbells, which isn't super duper challenging, but if I were doing this workout in your house with my limitation of eight pound dumbbells, I would do more repetitions and I would get those 10 pound dumbbells on the Amazon shopping list, <laughs> which I've been trying. They're still actually kind of hard to get for some reason. Short break. Okay. We ready? Second set. 
grab your dumbbell. If your first set was doable and comfortable, get a heavier dumbbell. Feet together, up over your head, knees soft. Take a moment to come into position so that you're really set up beautifully. The majority of pressure should be on your front heel. 12 reps. You should be thinking about your front leg and more specifically, your front heel. At the bottom, ideally, we want your bottom knee, your hip, your shoulder, and your arm to be almost in a perpendicular line to the floor, as close to it as possible. But again, every body is so different, and so little nuances are okay. But your goal is to have a straight line at the bottom there, right there, and again, if you're limited because of your back toes, go ahead and drop the dumbbell, use something for support, or place your hands on your front knee. 12 reps, same on the other side. Such a good exercise. Super challenging, by the way. That's probably one of the more challenging exercises that we do here. So if you're feeling it, good job. Proud of you. Ready? 12 reps. Heavy onto that heel. Every rep should be deliberate. Deliberate. We call this a set, but a set is filled with a mini set of little baby repetitions. Each repetition is its own workout. So I want you very deliberate very mindful and very conscientious of every single rep. Focusing on that front heel, learning about your body, knowing that if it's challenging, you will get stronger. One more and going into that goblet squat. Dumbbell stays in contact with your upper chest. Get those feet in good position. Always take a moment to set up your set. The higher quality set always comes from a good foundation. Squeeze your glutes. Use your breath. Exhaling when the work gets hard. If your heart rate's up and your breathing rate is up, that's great. And I want to make sure that you're really loading those muscles with a heavy weight load to challenge the strength of your musculature, not just your cardiovascular system. Two more. And short break. Or head on in to your third superset. Okay, next superset. One of my favorite all-time exercises. Can you guess? Probably not, because I have a lot of favorite exercises. Okay, let me demo. Dumbbell, RDL, Romanian deadlift. Some people call this a stiff leg deadlift. I call it a Romanian deadlift, which is also accurate, otherwise known as RDL. Second exercise is a dumbbell tricep kickback. Let me demonstrate. Heavy dumbbells for your RDL. Feet hip distance apart. Toes, toes turned to open. Listen up. Arch in your lower back. Just yesterday, I saw a very famous fitness influencer refer to a flat back right here. You do not have a flat back. That's an inaccurate cue. You want a neutral, natural arch in your back. Knees soft, hips move back with your natural, neutral arch. Dumbbells just below your knees, squeeze your glutes. Hips back, neutral arch in your lower spine, not a flat back, RDL. Second exercise, you'll want light to medium dumbbells to be able to do this exercise right. Shoulders back and down, RDL positioning, kicking those triceps back. Those two cues I just gave you are super important. We'll revisit when we get to that exercise. Grab your heavier dumbbells. Let's RDL. 
Heels, shoulder width distance, toes open slightly, neutral arch in your lower back, hips back, slide down and stand. Hips back, bringing those dumbbells just below your knees. This is technically a hinge. This is not a bend and sit. This is not a squat. This is a hip hinge. Knee soft, hips back with that natural, neutral arch in your lower back. Okay, now remember, some people do over arch their lower back. And so for you who over arches, you want to neutralize a bit. That's why I use the phrase a neutral, natural lower back arch because your lower back, it's called the lumbar spine, naturally and um, by nature is supposed to have a curvature. We want to maintain that to strengthen around it. One more and we're going into those tricep kickbacks. Light to medium dumbbells because I can't tell you how many times in my now 30 year career, people really wanna hit their triceps. So they go really heavy and they end up countering in their shoulders in an um, ineffective way. So shoulders back, shoulders down, RDL, bend the elbows, kick them back. Really important that you are retracting your shoulder blades. Otherwise, this exercise just goes into your traps and we want it in your triceps. So really kicking back with those shoulders pulled towards each other. Pull your shoulder blades towards each other, keeping your spine in alignment, he sorry, head in alignment with your spine. And again, a little bit of a natural curvature in your lower back. 12 reps, short break, and we're gonna do this superset again. So it's really important that you learn your body. So I tend to under arch in my lower back. That's my posture. And so years ago, I was deadlifting with a flat back and blew out my back because my back is already too flat. So over the years, I've really had to learn to enhance the ideal lumbar curvature. You've got to learn your own body because you could be someone who's overarching in your lower back. And if you're overarching in your lower back, we need you to neutralize it a little bit. So get a mirror, watch yourself, commit to a lifetime of learning, and then you will know what cue is really perfect for you. Second set, RDL. Toes open slightly, knees soft, shoulders back. Here we go. Hip hinge, squeeze those glutes. Hips back, press forward. Hips back. So there's a cue I like to think of right here. To me, the sensation of this first phase is sucking my hips back. So it's almost like I'm contracting and sucking my pelvis and my hips backward in space. That accentuates the eccentric contraction on the hamstrings and the glutes, making this first phase a bit more effective. Driving in the heels to go from the bottom to the top, and we got about two more, remember, aiming for a challenging 12, but making the change as you need to. Heavier dumbbells or more repetitions. Really, what's ever right for you today. Feet a little closer for this exercise. Knees bent, shoulders back, coming into that RDL, bending at the elbow, and drive it back. You really wanna be thinking almost more about getting your shoulders in place, okay? So a lot of people think about squeezing their triceps. And while that's not wrong, really, I want you to be thinking shoulder placement. Because if you put your shoulders into the right placement and then you just perform this exercise, you're gonna hit your triceps. Like, this is all triceps for me. I'm literally using three pound dumbbells and I feel it very effectively in my triceps because of how I'm performing this repetition, which as I said, you want to think of each repetition 
as a mini workout, okay? So each set is a workout in and of itself, and each repetition is your little mini workout. So super focused, every single rep, and those add up to make for a great workout. Go for your third superset if that's you, and I'm gonna show us our fourth combination of exercises. We're gonna be using a handled resistance band, and we've got a tricep paired with a bicep. Whenever I'm doing a bicep tricep superset, I always love to start with triceps. I like to activate the tricep because it's a huge muscle group before I activate the biceps. A lot of other fitness experts do biceps first because I'm not gonna go into why, <laughs> because I'll just be talking too long. But I really like to activate triceps first because the truth is my community is mostly women and we are all particularly interested in tightening up those triceps. So lay your band out in front of you Step on it three quarters of the way, bring it back behind you, hold your band in both hands, extending up. One of my favorite tricep exercises because it is so darn effective. Next exercise, band bicep curl. Stepping on your band with one or both feet, palms stay up. This is a supinated bicep curl. You ready? Let's start with that tricep. So send your band out in front of you, okay? Then step on it three quarters of the way completely with your foot. Come back behind, hold your handle equally, feet together, elbows by your temples, neutral, natural curvature in your lower spine. Keep your upper arm as parallel to the ground as you can. If there's a little bit of forward angle, see how I've got a little bit of forward angle on my upper arm, that's okay. But we really do wanna to try to keep that upper arm almost perpendicular to the ground. Elbows facing up to the ceiling, not necessarily at a forward angle. A little bit of angle is totally fine. Again, 12 to 15, depending on your resistance, whew, as well as, whew, ah, your fitness level. So you should be feeling your triceps because we just finished with the tricep. Your arms are gonna feel amazing tomorrow. Bicep supinated curl, one foot or two foot in the middle of your band. You want two feet in the middle of your band if your band is highly resistive. If your band's a little on the easy side, put both of your feet inside of the band right at the middle because what that does is it shortens your band and it shortens the distance between your foot and your hand, making that band more resistive. So chest is up, shoulders are back and down. This is another one of those exercises where people tend to lift upward with their shoulders. When you lift upward with your shoulders, you're activating and loading your biceps less. So on that exercise, it's so important to get what I always talk about, shoulders back, I'm exaggerating, shoulders down, I'm exaggerating. Because then the bicep, which originates up in your shoulder, actually has less distance to contract because your shoulder's not up here. So it makes the bicep work better by anchoring that shoulder down in space to take the work off the trapezius. Second set, where are we? Band, tricep, overhead, extension. Lay that band out, stepping on three quarter of the way. Adjust your band based on your first set. If your first set was easy, step on more of your band. If your first set was hard like mine was, step on uh, less of your band, okay? So you wanna give yourself more band in your hand to make it easier. And some good work today is gonna pay off in dividends tomorrow. So work hard, big push, big push, two more. Arms are gonna be nice and pumped, activated, and maybe a little bit sore tomorrow. Little bit of soreness is not a bad thing. One or two feet in, shoulders, back and down. Set your shoulders even before you begin. Knees soft, supinated means that you keep your palms facing forward. 
chest stays lifted, shoulders aggressively pressing downward, like really aggressively right now. Push your shoulders towards your hips aggressively and notice how much better and more um, uh, activating that feels in the front of your arms, your biceps. Cueing is everything. Body placement is everything when it comes to strength training. Two more. Use your breath if you need to and relax. All right, my friends, if you're doing three supersets, please take a short break and head on back for the third superset of those two exercises. Let me show you our last two combo, last two exercise combo, triceps and biceps. Again, you're getting an awesome arm workout today. Last two exercises, we're going to be going down on the ground. You need one heavier dumbbell and a set of medium weight dumbbells. So maybe a 10, 12, 15, 20 pound dumbbell, and then a five or an eight set of dumbbells. Let me show you our first exercise. Dumbbell, French press. Ideally, you're gonna be five to eight pounds or more. Once you get up to like 10, 12, 15 pounds, this exercise is just um, sort of like biomechanically inefficient. So most people are gonna max out at about 12 to 15 pounds, unless you're a, you know, a man, if you happen to be watching this and playback, you could go a little bit heavier, but most women are gonna cap out at about 15 pounds. There's your dumbbell French press paired with single heavier dumbbell concentration curl from a um, split stance here. You can sit in a chair if you have one. Um, elbow is towards that inner thigh. We've got one dumbbell and we've got a concentration curl. We'll do both arms in each set. So you'll get a total of four sets between your arms. Let's go. French press, like I said, moderate weight dumbbell up over your chest. Press your shoulders towards your hips, like always. Really push your shoulders towards your hips. Neutral, natural arch in your back. You don't flatten out your back here. If your back kind of naturally flattens out, that's okay, but don't intentionally flatten out your back. Elbows stay in place, dumbbells come down towards your shoulders, and I want you to really squeeze through your triceps there. Make sure you're pushing your shoulders towards your hips, especially at the top here. Press your shoulders towards your hips. Super important. Neck is nice and long. Elbows stay in space as if your upper arm stayed in one place and the only thing that's moving is your lower arm. Now you're gonna get a little bit of an adjustment at the elbows, but really you want your elbows, your goal is to try to keep your elbows in space exactly where they are as if they were locked off, okay? 12 reps, one more, and let's go into single dumbbell concentration curl. You will want a slightly heavier dumbbell here because we are just working on one arm. Biceps are pretty strong, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, maybe even 15 pounds. You can tuck your back toe if you'd like. I like to keep my toe tucked under, and here we go. Big squeeze and potential pause at the top. I want you to really focus on getting a great contraction here at the top. Great contraction. Squeeze through the front of the arm, which is your bicep. Still keeping your shoulder pressing towards your hip. Another exercise where the shoulder wants to ride up towards the ear. You don't want that. In fact, in my school, you never have your shoulders come up towards your ears unless you're doing a dedicated exercise like a shoulder shrug, intentionally to strengthen your trapezius. But you won't see that here because I think it's a silly exercise. Don't tell any of my male counterparts because they love the shoulder shrugs. But I think it's just such a silly exercise. And, uh, you know, unless you're an athlete, you don't really need to be strengthening your trapezius. Okay, here we go. Other side, same thing. Squeeze that bicep. Like I said earlier in the workout, you'll probably notice one arm is better than the other. Oddly, my non-dominant hand is my stronger arm. But that kind of makes sense because I'm left-handed 
and it's a right-hand world. And so even though I'm left-handed, I do a lot of things right-handed. So my right hand is my more dominant arm when it comes to exercise. So if you notice one arm feels weaker, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put more love and more attention into that arm that feels weaker. You don't do more reps, you don't do a heavier weight load, you put more mental energy in it to get the activation and the technique up on the side that's a little weaker. Short break, let's go back in for our second set. So if your French press, dumbbell French press felt comfortable, heavier dumbbells. If that concentration curl, if your last two reps were comfortable, that's a sign that you wanna pick up a heavier set of dumbbells. Let's go, second set, French press. Pick your poison, knees bent, feet on the floor, neutral spine, press your shoulders towards your hips, super important, and dumbbells come down towards your shoulders. Obviously, make sure that you're safe as the dumbbells pass your face, especially if you're using heavier dumbbells. There have been times in the past where I was using very heavy dumbbells and they're a bit harder to control and they're also larger in size. So obviously you wanna be very careful as those dumbbells are coming down to pass your face because the truth is you do want your dumbbells pretty close to your face, okay? The end of the dumbbell should be heading towards the middle of the top of your shoulder and depending on your mobility, you can even bring that dumbbell all the way down and tap your shoulder at the bottom, depending on uh, your skill level, but also your strength and the mobility around your elbow and your shoulder joint. 12 reps. I don't know about you, but my triceps are gonna be sore tomorrow. I can feel it. And relax, concentration curl. I'm not complaining, my triceps could use a little love. All right, we ready? Concentration curl, 10 to 12 reps, depending on how challenging this weight load is for you. Squeeze and pause at the top if your dumbbell's a little light and if you don't have a heavier dumbbell. You can make the load harder on the muscle by pausing. So if you're using an eight pound dumbbell but you need a 10 pound dumbbell, all you gotta do is pause at the top. Pause for two seconds pause for two seconds and that automatically makes that load more challenging on the muscle even though you're not using a heavier weight load follow that's all thanks to time under tension and time under tension is how we actually change our muscles all right other side last set here unless you're gonna do your third superset How's that bicep feeling? Second set usually feels a little bit better. Second set, those muscles are usually fully prepared for the movement, fully firing, warmed up, activated, at attention, and often second set feels better than the first set. Big pull. Squeeze, really activate that muscle. Two more and release it down. If you're doing a third set, please go for it. Or if you're with me, let's just do a short little cool down here. Come to your hands and knees, hands under your shoulders, uh, knees under your hips. And I want you to just exaggerate that lumbar spine, letting your belly drop for the floor and then reverse. Let's round it out, pressing your spine up towards the ceiling as much as possible. And opening with an arch, you can look forward if that feels good on your neck and rounding, opening, and let's do one more. Coming into that arch, looking forward, and round. From here, knees and toes and feet together. Tuck your toes. I want you to shift back onto your toes into a crouched position. If this is uncomfortable, please stay here. Otherwise, I want you to rock back and forward putting up pressure onto the forefeet, bringing your knees to tap down onto the ground, bringing range of motion to the toes, range of motion to the toes. The more uncomfortable this is for you on your toes, the more you need to be doing this. For some people, this is excruciating. And I promise if you practice this 
three to four or five times a week, it's going to start to feel better because this is a very important motion on the toes and the forefeet. You've got to be able to do this. If this is super easy for you, please just come into a seated position, sit heavy onto those feet and really bring that foot flexibility. This is an often overlooked mechanism in the fitness industry. And it's one of the most important things that I see limits a lot of my clients, because if you don't have great foot function, you're not going to have a great walking lunge. You're not going to have a great Bulgarian split squat. You're not going to have a great split squat. Follow me, come back to a crouch position, listen up, come all the way up and immediately lift your knees 10 times. This is to help return the blood flow upward so that you don't get dizzy. Anytime you come from the floor or a seated position, you want to lift your knees eight to 10 times to bring the blood flow back up to your head so you don't get dizzy. One more, let's take a deep inhale. Exhale it out, two more, big inhale up. Exhale it out one more. I'm Holly Perkins. Thank you so much for joining me for this workout. I will see you next time. Have a great day.